Hi, two J's here. What's up? I uh, just wanted to do a little, little uh, video on, uh, on Abraham because I mean, so there's there's people that are always say that about the story of Abraham, and they're always like, oh, what kind of God would command a father to kill his son, and blah blah blah, blah and like. You know, and it's the, oh, he sounds like he was crazy and gonna stab his son. And, and uh, like, what, well, that, what that's supposed to show is that's supposed to parallel um, God giving up his son, Jesus, for us. And it's supposed to show um, obedience, the obedience to God. So it's like, because there's the scripture that says, um, anyone who comes comes to me and does not hate their father or mother or their family their children even themselves is not worthy of me so it's just talking about when you first come to God because you'll be like I said in my previous in one of my previous videos when that's talking about specifically when you come to God how you hate the world so you're basically want you turn away from it you have to get to that point before you turn to God and give up your worldly life and you get sick of it and you're like I'm done with this. I want, I want, a, I want a godly life, not a worldly life. And you basically hate the world and you walk away from the world. So until you get to that there, um, you you can't become a disciple of God because you're too worldly. So that's what it's talking about. So it's like, and but that's just specifically. So it's to, it's not talking about you continue to hate those people, but the story of Abraham is supposed to show obedience and faith to God. So, because, um, so, so Abraham was married to Sarah, or Sarai, and they couldn't have a child. They kept, there until old age, they kept, uh, struggling to have, have children, but they were promised from God to have children. Abraham was given promises, so they were always, he was always wondering, oh, what's going on, kind of thing. Well, then, then, um... Sarah, pretty much she was getting old, and she said, oh, and she offered Abraham to have a child by her serving girl, her servant, uh, Hagar. So then Abraham uh, uh, got together with Hagar and had a child, Ishmael, and and then uh, Sarah, Sarah got jealous, I guess, um, after they had, they had a child because... Uh, they were getting, she, the, her servant started, uh, disobeying her and things like that. But, uh, yeah, so, like, what it shows is, like, it's, and that was before the time, because some people would be like, oh, Abraham, Abraham's like an adulterer. Well, that was also before the time that the commandments were given through Moses. That was further down the road. So, so, at that time, that wasn't the command, that wasn't a commandment like the thou shall not commit adultery kind of thing it was there is basically there in the time where they're be fruitful and multiply kind of thing which you know and uh but they were uh so then they they had a kid and then all and then so an an angel or a messenger a servant from god came to abraham one day and told abraham that he would have a child with sarah and sarah laughed and and the messenger or the servant, whoever it was, said like, "Why does she laugh?" And then, do you not believe that that God can do whatever He wills, like whatever He wishes? And then she said, "Oh, I did not laugh," and she basically lied. And then, um, which that's also what it's supposed to show too, because I uh, their son Isaac. So Isaac means laughter. So, so it's not a coincidence that his, his name is Isaac. So it's a lot, so laughter. So that Isaac symbolizes laughter. So laughter was given to Sarah and, and, uh, Abraham as their first, as their firstborn, which then that's when, that's when Sarah got jealous after, after, uh, Isaac came along because then there was like the competition between uh 
f- for between for the birthright of like between Ishmael and Isaac. So like uh, that's when they sent Hagar and uh, Ishmael away. And uh, so, um, but yeah, it's his name represents his. It means laughter. So laugh. It was also to show that laughter is can be given, which is represents joy. Laughter can, is given from God, but it can also be taken away. So, so um, you know, it, it's like I don't feel like it's a coincidence that she laughed. Which is like basically a, oh a form of kind of mockery like lot and then kind of like lied about it tried to cover it up like oh I don't don't laugh but I mean if you were old in your old age and someone someone a stranger came along to your husband and came in your tent and was a visitor and a guest and said oh like you're gonna have a child like obviously you have your logical human doubts you know but. Uh, Abraham was a, was very uh, faithful and uh, he was very zealous and believing of the Lord. So like, so he he took he take, took the word of the Lord serious very seriously, and so like, so he was told to sacrifice Isaac, which is he's being tested to see. So some people will be like, oh Abraham was crazy, and then it's like, so he brought him up to sacrifice him, and which. Uh, and then it said it's he stayed he stopped him from doing it right before he was going to do it it was like basically seeing if he would or not so there's parts of that that i mean it's like that is also goes hand in hand with things to do with child sacrifice because like there's that's what the satanists do you know like the child sacrifices and like a lot of the tribes got cast out like in Babylonian times and stuff like that for like child sacrifices and stuff so it's like like uh that's also what it what it can, what it can symbolize is if you look at that like Abraham has to do with children cuz he he loved children he wanted children he's a father He's like he's looked at as the father of all the nations, things like that. It said, "I'll give you many descendants as as endless as the stars," type thing. So it's like so he he represents he's represents a father and Isaac, which is joy, which is laughter and joy, represents the son, which is Jesus, which is also symbolizing and paralleling God and Jesus. That Jesus Jesus brings joy and laughter and. And then, uh, and he's the obedient son that was willing to sacrifice, be sacrificed, things like that. And then, so it, it's supposed to show that God can give laughter and take it away, kind of thing. And then also that, and then he, God stopped the child sacrifice. So that also parallels the end time scriptures to do with like Isaiah. Uh, forty nine twenty five, where it says, "I will save your children." and things like that like I will contend with those who contend with you and I will save your children so it's like so when people are like oh like why is that in the bible and child sacrifice and uh it makes people think like cuz like oh someone of god if, oh god like told me to to sacrifice and it's like seems like a way that the devil could could get you to do one of those things like sacrifice your child or something when it's like that commandment came after you know like thou shall not kill uh I, thou shall not commit adultery things like that that's given after uh a, after moses that was or that was given through moses so like after abraham so it's like so nowadays like if people were like you could see how that's like would could confuse people and they'd be like oh if god wants me to to stop this sacrifice he'll he'll tell me like he did to abraham when it's like that's clearly child sacrifice is not part of god's of god like there's that's the only instance that we see uh besides jesus in the bible as a to do with human sacrifice so uh, and like hum like god doesn't sacrifice humans it, like that's that's like basically another part of what it's supposed to show so it's like jesus was was the sacrifice isaac's the only other one that is talked about in the bible that i know of that is talked about being a, like for a human sacrifice which is supposed to parallel god and jesus like him abraham 
is supposed to be the father, uh, represents and parallels God in the situation, giving up his son Jesus. So it's a, it's a parallel. So it's like, that's what that's supposed to show. And it's also sh supposed to show, if you think about that parallel, he stopped him from doing it. So he put an end to the child sacrifice. So that's what it's supposed to be showing too. So it's like that can parallel and show for the, the future because he's going to save the children. He's put, he's going to put an end to the ch child sacrifices of all these Satanists killing kids and all that. So it's like, so that's what that is when people will be like, Oh, like, why is that in the Bible? Oh, Abraham seems crazy. Blah, 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 blah. That's why it says like the wisdom's hidden in the scriptures. Like there's lots of symbolism in the, in the scriptures. There's lots of symbolism, parallels, uh, and like, you know, par they parallel each other. Some people think like not parable, there's lots of parables too, but parallels. So like something, something that foreshadows a future event, you know, like there's things that are uh, patterns that through the Bible, all throughout God's writing. So that's what that shows kind of thing. And then it also falls in line with the, um, Zerubbabel building God's temple so it, like in those times when the governor uh, Zerubbabel would, brought the people back to the land and built the temple he said like why like he said to the people like they're you put they're, they started building their own houses before building the church and building up God's temple and house you know so like that's so that's what it also kind of it can parallel that as well because it's like you're, do you put your family and your your physical earthly house uh, ahead of God building God's temple and building up the spiritual temple of God seeking God first be like do you, or do you put humans in your your own humanly life and human family before God so that's what it it, it was like it seems like it parallels that too where it's like it, it's like that's that's why it's like what for me it's like I'm I'm more concerned about building God's temple, you know, and building up spiritually, building up the temples of humans and people of building up God's people to, to come back to God, as opposed to like focused on like, Oh, getting my own career, a house, car. Like I seek the kingdom first, you know, and it's like, so you seek the kingdom first, you do God's work, you put God's God first. And, and another thing, reason why, it's it shows that and why it says like it was counted as faithfulness to abraham for doing that is because like god god has good judgment and it takes to have faith in god you have to trust that he's just and he has the right judgment so in times in the days of the judgment if your families even if your family members uh whoever you know um i i mean there is an age of accountability, it seems, where it's like, I don't think, like, kids come off as, they're pretty innocent, they don't know any better yet, and, you know, so it's like, I don't think, like, you know, God's gonna, going to be as harsh with, with children, you know, because they don't know any better, like, there's that age of accountability, but once they become a certain age, you know, like, my, you usually as you grow up, and you're from a kid to being, like, a teenager or a full-grown like adult you know that's when you do inherit those sins you know you live and you learn you do stupid things as a kid you steal you do you get into fights and uh you know things things like that and like hopefully you learn through that age of accountability to learn some accountability and things like that and responsibility through that age and but all kids don't always have the proper guidance from their parents teaching them the proper morals and values and godly teachings of God and Jesus Christ as they're as they're brought up so God I'm sure will take that into consideration you know like but yeah so it's supposed to show that and then also another parallel was when he was right about to if when he was about to uh uh sacrifice Isaac he stopped and then a sacrifice was given to him which was like a ram like a ram so like which is like it had it, its horns were caught on a bush it said so like and it which is like represents could also represent like the the goats the the 
they, which the goat is connected to like Satan and the horns are connected to like Satan and like devils, right? So it's like basically putting the de the horn creature in the place of the child sacrifice. So it's like they were put, it's like, oh, if, so you see, you see the parallel there where it's like, there's all these satanic people sacrificing children in the end times in the day of judgment. It says because of that and because the people turn away, that anger is God and brings upon God's wrath and judgment. So it talks about in the end times, those are the people that are going to be getting smited and condemned basically by, and like struck by God to, you know, as a war as a warning signs, like to turn back from your ways, repent from those ways. So it basically, but if you look at that, the symbolism in that, that ram was put in the place of Isaac, the children. So the basically, you know, those horned beasts are going to be killed basically instead of the children is what that can also parallel, you know? So it's like, because I'm sure God is not happy with these satanic people uh, sacrificing children and stuff like that. Like that is not a practice taught in the Bible. Like I said, human sacrifice is only, it was only through Jesus and Jesus wasn't just human. He was, he's the Lord. So he's, he's God's son. So he, he has always been with the father. Like he's, he basically is the human image of God, which was showing that God is willing to su to suffer with us and for us. He doesn't just send us to suffer and like, and he doesn't just abandon us all to, to these devils. You know, he's like, uh, he's like, uh Oh, I gotta go, go make a way for my, for my children, you know, because these other, they used to be children of God. They used to be sons of God, angels, but they all rebelled and be corrupt, corrupt. It's the, in their, it's in their, like, you know, it's in their plan to corrupt creation. So, the, and to drag them down with them. So, so that's what that's supposed to show. Like, so yeah, I just wanted to touch on those, uh, touch on those teachings a bit because, and those parallels a bit, because it's like, clearly like some people will be like right away, you know, there's certain things in the Bible and they judge just by, that's why it says lean not on your own understanding. A lot of these kinds of things don't get revealed to you until you seek the wisdom in the, in the Bible, which takes understanding like from, and discernment from God. So, so like, and once you do and turn to God and you know, you hate the world, you hate the people, yourself, you just hate worldly life, you know, and you get sick of it, then you turn to God, then you, you begin, like, I, I didn't even understand that scripture until that happened, and I got, I hated everyone, I got to the point where I was like, you know, I'm done with this world, I hate everyone, they're all a bunch of liars, this is all confusing, and evil, and betrayers, and stuff, Till I got to that point, then I taught, sought, sought out God, and then I became a disciple of God, and then he gave me a new heart, new nature, and he teaches me how to love all others as myself and view all. So I have to view all others as myself first before you can do that. So, but it takes literally getting to the point where you hate the world and you want nothing to do with it. Like you see how the way that they're going, you see that way and you see, no, that's not the way I want to go. I don't want to go the way of sins and just filth and all that. And so like, then you turn away and then God saves you, restores your heart, gives you a new heart, gives you restoration. So that's what that's supposed to show. And then like, so people, when they just, if you're, if you don't understand those kinds of things and you haven't turned to God yet, anyone who's trying to read the Bible be, before turning to God and getting, asking for any kind of discernment or wisdom or anything like that, they're not asking God for that yet. So they're not going to see any of that in it. They'll just read it and they'll judge a book by its cover. Like, Oh, Abraham sounds like he was a crazy guy. Like who would kill their kid? Uh, what a psychopath. Like that sounds like he's delusional. He probably heard a voice. He was probably like paranoid, schizophrenic, went up on a mountain and then, uh, you know, heard another voice that told him not to blah, 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 blah. They don't understand it. So like they'll, they try to logic it in a human way in their head. Like, so, but there's tons of symbols. There's so much symbolism in the Bible and like parallels in the Bible. So that's what that's supposed to show. So I just wanted to touch on that because like, uh, 
yeah, just to help, hopefully help bring some understanding to to some people. So it's like, if, and, and it says it's the joy of kings to seek wisdom, to seek the wisdom that's in the word. So I know it brings me lots of joy to seek these these uh, the wisdom all throughout God's word. Anyway, much love, peace. Hey guys, two J's here. Just wanted to uh, give a teaching on, do a video on Abraham in the Bible. So Abraham and Isaac. So in in the Bible, some people will read that story of Abraham and Isaac, and and they'll they'll be like, oh, uh, Abraham's crazy. And, like what who why would god like want to tell a son to kill his father or a father to kill his son and i mean and stuff like that so it's like a but i mean it parallels so it's it, what it is is it parallels god giving up his son jesus for us as the sacrifice so it's a parallel and then it also you know there's it also parallels um the it, it parallels the God saving the children from sacrifice, from sacrifice, from child sacrifice, which is connected to end time scriptures as well. Because if you look at these times, you know, all the Satanists and all throughout history, there's been these satanic people sacrificing children and doing blood rituals and stuff like that. So it's like, and it says in Isaiah 20, 49, 25, that I will contend with those who contend with you and I will save your children i will save the children so so it's it talks about god saving the the children from sacrifices and from these kinds of things so there i mean and there's the only those are the only times that i'm aware of in the bible that talks about human sacrifice is isaac and jesus so those are the only two that i that come to mind about uh human sacrificing where it had to do with god uh, requiring a human sacrifice or asking for a human sacrifice type deal but it's like and and it's like and that so that shows that god put a stop to the sac is going to put a stop to the sac child sacrifice so uh when people and uh when people see that like uh they'll just be like they don't understand it and they'll be like oh like that sounds like you abraham must have had schizophrenia and was gonna kill his son and then you know blah 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 because blah, 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 they don't understand the parallels and things like that so it's like uh but yeah it's supposed to show like that and then like also because when you think about it about it like uh when the, when the servant of the lord came to abraham and sarah or Sarai to tell them that they were going to have a child and that she was going to have a child in her old old age. She laughed. So and the and the servant was like, "Why do you laugh? Do you think God cannot do this? Can do cannot do anything?" And then she was like, "Oh, I didn't laugh." And it's like now, yeah, it's like yeah, you did, you know, kind of thing. So it's like, so and Isaac means laughter. So that was showing that it's like God can give laughter, but He can also take it away. You know, so it's like it's it's like also supposed there's that lesson in it too where it's like yo you got to be careful so it's like so you'll try to laugh at god and things like that like being a being a mocker and like god god's in control of of life and death and things like that so he can give it and he can take it away so so it's it's also supposed to show that you know so it was like basically like but uh yeah abraham's like he was credited to him as faith fa he was called faithful for doing that you know because you know because that because he he put god before himself and his fa his own personal family his earthly family or worldly things so it's like that's what it shows too because there's you know there's the scriptures about that where it's like you know you can't come to god and, and while you put, if you're trying to put your earthly things before God, it says first seek the kingdom, then all these things will, can can will be added to you, kind of thing. So it's like it talks about that, and that also parallels the end time things to do with, and the scriptures to do with the Zerubbabel rebuilding the temple of God. So it's like they, when they came back and they brought he he brought the people back to rebuild the temple 
he was like, you're putting your own homes and you're putting your own worldly lives and be before building up God's house, you know? So it's like that, that's what it's supposed to teach too, that it's like, you know, you're supposed to be putting God first because that because like that's that's what you're supposed to be doing so because like that's why it says things like oh if you're not anyone that will put their mother father or anyone ahead before god is not worthy of god so it's like because basically like when the end time comes and the judgment comes and things like that that like like god's just in his judgment so it's like the those people's choices are going to be the, ju the judge of them so it's like if they've made a ton of terrible choices and they haven't sought forgiveness and mercy and uh grace through jesus christ and salvation in jesus christ that's their choices so like there's nothing that you know, like you're going to have to accept that as like people have to accept that that god is in charge his rule and these people are making their own choices they've been told what is right what is wrong there are things in the bible all about that so it's like like you see people who are like oh i i don't believe in god because uh oh i don't believe just because this person's a homosexual they're gonna be condemned or blah 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 blah, blah. and like it's like there, there's things in the bible that talks specifically about that about people that are given over to lust and to fleshly things instead of god so they're putting their same thing they're putting their earthly worldly pleasures and life before god so it's like that's what it's talking about it's like so you're not they're not worthy you're not worthy if you're putting yourself before god that's you're not worthy of god you, like that because you'll that that shows rebellion that you will choose yourself your selfish desires before doing what's right before put before thinking about what influences children other people everyone instead of loving all others as yourself and doing what's best overall for everyone you're so you you choosing your own selfish things which causes confusion for children oh is it all right for men to sleep with men or women to sleep with women if it was if it, it was if god intended men to be with men he wouldn't have made men women so it would he would have made men men you know, he would have he wouldn't have had to make Eve. He would have just made men for men. You know, but it's like it says that because I will make a man a woman, a helper. You know, kind of thing. So it's like, it, like there's clear clear things in the Bible where it's like, it like like about in Romans in in Romans uh, it talks about that Romans one eighteen to thirty two I think it is talks about how God will give them over to the, their fleshly desires because they're choosing to rebel. So he's like, you want to rebel? go ahead that's your choice but he, it's not going to be free of consequence he already told people it says in there they will get the due consequence it says that they, even though they know it's going to bring death they still continue to do these things and and promote and those who practice those things so it's like there's there's things so many things in the bible that just talks about like seeking god first to to please god first instead of like your worldly self of like trying to do your own will over god's kind of thing so it's like so that's what that's supposed to parallel you know there's tons of parallels like that in the bible and like but like yeah a abraham and isaac like it's not a, i don't think it's a coincidence that his name is isaac and then it's laughter and then his mom laughed basically laughed at when which shows a lack of belief in god you know so like and then abraham basically stepped up and showed that you know he di he didn't have a lack of belief in god so it basically se seems like you know his obedience st stopped like affected god's decision in that moment you know like because like if 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 he wouldn't have been faithful Isaac could have been taken back, taken away for maybe because the mom was laughing and mocking God, basically, you know, so it's like, like, but, uh, that's, it's if, you know, and theoretical, or, uh, shouldn't think about hypotheticals and things, what happened, happened, so, like, but that's, that's what it's supposed to show, it's just supposed to show the parallels of, like, how God stopped the sacrifice, the child sacrifice, can take give laughter take away laughter it shows that he he like 
sent his son, sacrificed his own son. It shows the extent of that. So it's like, it's, you know, when people are like, that's crazy. Like, Abraham's crazy. That's what God, that's what God did for us. That's how much he, it's supposed to reflect God's love for us. He, that's how much, you know, I'm sure God loved his son just as much, if not more, than Abraham loved his son, you know? Like, so it's supposed to show that love. You know the love you have for your children. Imagine that, having to give up one of your chil children, you know, like. So it's like basically that's what he did, you know, he sent his child, his son, to us to give, to, to give, make a way for us, he, you know, because we're his child, we can be his children too. So he sent a, he gave us that, that way because he's like, you, you know, devils and Satan, and they corrupt, they came. So he's like, you know, he's, he didn't just abandon us. He gave, he knew if he came to say to give to sent his sent his son which was the human image of god like the human vessel of god which means the spirit of god was dwelling in that earthly vessel of jesus his whole time he was here so he knew that eventually the devils are going to come kill him and attack him he knew he'd have to suffer so it's supposed to show that he's willing to suffer with his creation for his creation and then like also it shows that it's like it, he shows how much he knows, you know, like the, like the, even the devils that attacked him and killed him and stuff like that, like they weren't even aware of what they were doing, you know, I'm sure they couldn't have touched him until his appointed time. And then as soon as he, he, he was done his testimony, he allows them to, it's like, boom, then they do it they, and they killed him, you know, and, it, and he already foretold of that as, as a, as a big heads up where it's like, yo, look, God already foretold this. This is already like said, like shows his foresight, you know, that he already knows. And like these, like these devils didn't even, they, they didn't even know, you know, like they, they didn't even know what they were doing, you know, like clearly don't even know what they were doing because they basically, you know, became pawns in that, in doing that, you know, like God already knew it said like, Oh, they will be casting lots for my robes and, I can count the bones in my hands and uh, the holes that they have pierced me and th things like that. He was like, it's already all foretold. It's just supposed to show how much God knows what he's doing. It's supposed to like all the parallels, the wisdom, things like that. So it's like people that don't understand symbolism and parallels and parables and things like that, that don't seek it through God, that don't ha seek wisdom and discernment through God. Bible's not going to make any sense to any of you. You're all just going to be like, oh, but it doesn't even make any sense. It's stupid. And blah, blah, blah. Oh, the, the ship of Noah. There would, there would, like, no way you could fit two of each animal. And, like, you just think in a human logical way instead of, like, sim you don't go to, you don't think about it symbolically. You don't think about, like, the parallels for that. You don't think about, you don't seek the wisdom in the scriptures. And it's meant to be like that. Like, God has it like that so that it's hidden. Only those who are, who are zealous for God that seek wisdom and uh, discernment through God are going to find it. Uh, like it's actually hidden from the people who are like who are like oh it's stupid they don't even seek it that's it's meant to be that way it's meant to be that way you don't deserve to see the wisdom if you don't seek it through god he's the only one who can open your eyes and your hearts and your ears to hear these things and to see these things but because you're rejecting him you're just going to keep continuing in your ignorance of like, just, you know, you're not going to look at it symbolically. You're not going to look at, you, you'll take, you'll take the things that are supposed to be symbolic. You'll take them literal. And then you'll take the things that are literal and you'll put them as symbolic. Like you'll confuse it all. You'll just get it all mixed up. You'll be like, this doesn't make sense. Blah, blah, blah. That's why it says lean not on your own understanding. The people who have already sought through God, people can see the people like we can see things like the wisdom in the scriptures the symbolism the revelation in the scriptures these other people who haven't done that yet you're not going to find it you're not going to find it until you seek it through god god's just going to keep you blind and rebellious to it because that's what you're choosing so you're not you're not worthy to know that that to see the glory <laughs> and the genius so i mean so that's what it shows, you know, it's like there's, there's only two, there's only, it's not, wasn't God promoting human sacrifice, 
you know? So it's like, and like, that was the thing too, like with Abraham, like, because he couldn't have the kid, uh, Sarah basically gave him permission to, to be, to have a child with her serving girl, uh, Hagar, which to give him the son Ishmael. So, and now the, the people will be like, Oh, Abraham's an adulterer. Abraham came before the, the, he was before Moses and the, and the commandments. So he was before adultery, like thou shall not commit adultery. That wasn't given as a law, as the law yet. So, and, and, and like thou shall not kill when they're like, Oh, it's breaking the first command. Thou shall not kill is not a commandment yet either at that point, you know? So it's like, so, I mean, obviously God said he didn't want people doing violence. It's never been his, it wasn't his will to do violence. So, but yeah, so like people, when they're like, oh, my God, it's contradictory. He's going to kill someone. And oh, he committed adultery. It's like those weren't, Moses came after Abraham. So like the law was given after that. So, you know, but so like, yeah, like nowadays, if anyone was trying to heard a voice telling them to sacrifice a child, that goes against thou shall not kill. And it also, you know, so it's like, that wouldn't be God, you know what I mean? And it's like, people will be like, oh, God will will stop me from doing it like he did to Abraham. And it's like, no, like, that's not, that's like, there's a, there's a law given now. That there was no, there is no examples of God promoting human sacrifice in the Bible at all, except for through Jesus, which is basically him offering up his son, which is like, parallels that, but it was also him in his son so it's just supposed to like they're they're one together so it's supposed to show that he was willing to, to suffer and die for us not to just leave us under to these devils confusions and attacks and like their tyranny over us he's like no i'm gonna come and contend with those who contend with you and i will save your children i will save my children so that's what it shows anyone that doesn't want to be saved by god through god and jesus you're not going to be so that's what it shows you're not a child of god until you choose to become a child of god which means you choose to be saved through jesus christ so like that's what it's supposed to show. So there's all these people that will be like, everyone's a child of God. No, you're not. The Bible doesn't say that everyone's a child of God. It says everyone's a creation of God, but it says only those who turn to Jesus Christ, he gives the right to become children of God. Only those who are loving God and loving all others, which means you're viewing God and all others as a part of yourself as yourself basically because they exist in you god is existing in you right now all these people are existing in you right now they're all in part of your mind your heart your re your reality it's all shared so you have to view them as yourself as a part of yourself if you don't even view them as yourself yet how are you following the, the commandment of loving them as yourself yet you're not so that's what that's supposed to show it doesn't mean you're the almighty god or the one son jesus christ but you're supposed to be one with them in spirit once you come to Jesus, to God through Jesus Christ, that's why it says Jesus is the only way. Because you can't come to know this and you can't come to God except through Jesus. You can't come to God through any other way except for Jesus. He taught this way. That's There's no one else that taught this way. Not you can't find it through Buddha, this, this false God or that false God or this person that taught oneness and this and that. There's no te there's no one that is the Christ that except that except for Jesus Christ is the Christ. He is the chosen Messiah that this was taught through, given through. We wouldn't know any of this ex except for through Jesus, which came from this is which came from God for us. So that's what it's supposed to show. Uh, it also shows that, you know, he put us, he put an animal in the place of the sacrifice for Isaac. So he provided the sacrifice, which it shows he put an end to the child sacrifice and then he put an animal in its place. So it's like basically, which I mean, when the judgment comes, it talks about that, like God's going to smite all these evil people and it's going to be the ones who are doing these child sacrifices and things like that. If they don't repent and turn away, they're going to become the animals that are, that get put in place for the sacrifice. They're going to be bringing it on themselves. They're choosing to act like animals and like they're not behaving, not loving all others as themselves, not loving God as themselves, as a part of themselves, things like that. It's showing 
that's what it shows. God's going to put an end to these child sacrifices. So if you're a, if you're one of those people that were puzzling over that part of the Bible, like, oh, Abraham and Isaac, and why would he, why is that in there, and this and that, and God, it's talking about human sacrifice, and this and that, because, like, I thought about that, too. It's like, are they trying to promote human sacrifice in the Bible, like, God's pro that? It's like, no, those are the only two examples in the Bible that I know of that talks about God requiring a, a human sacrifice is Isaac and Jesus Christ. So those are the parallels, but he saved, he stopped Isaac. So, and then like he resurrected Jesus as well. So, you know, so that that's what it shows, you know, it shows that he can give, take away laughter, joy, which Jesus represents laughter and joy. So that's the parallels. So anyway, I just wanted to share that because there's lots of people there, they get confused over that, and they'll be like, ooh, like Abraham was he schizo, and he was just a crazy man that went up on a mountain and heard a voice to tell him to kill his own son, and oh, uh, what kind of discernment does he have if he would do that, and blah, 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 you know, so it's like, that's what it's supposed to show. Anyway, much love, I hope this brought some uh, understanding uh, to some of, into some of the scriptures. Uh, anyway, much love, peace.